In Fusion 360, when we make sketches, we want to make sure that we have them fully constrained. We can use sketch constraints and dimensions. If you want to learn more about sketch constraints, please see the previous video. I'm going to create a sketch on the ground plane, and I'm going to select the line tool by pressing L, and I'm going to draw four lines. These lines are not a rectangle, but I can use sketch constraints to constrain them. I'm going to twirl out my component and my sketches. If you look here, the sketch is just on its own, just an icon. There's no padlock here. And all the sketch lines are blue. That means they are not constrained. If I move this line, these lines change as well. We don't want that. We want our sketch to be fully constrained so we know what our model is going to do. So let's make this into a cube. I could use the horizontal vertical on this one and this one. I could also combine constraints by using the perpendicular constraint here. So now I have a rectangle, but notice it is still blue because we don't know where this rectangle is supposed to be and we don't know its dimensions. So we can use dimensions to fully constrain our sketch. Dimensions are up here at the top, but you can also press the D key. We can dimension in between two points or a line. So if I click this line, it's 98. I'm gonna type 100. Now it's still not black. That's because we know how big that is, but we don't know where it is. Let's go ahead and dimension this line. One nice thing about dimensions, I can click this dimension, and you can see here it says D1. So now this is a driven dimension. If I change this dimension to 85, the other one will change as well. So that's very convenient. Let's go ahead and make a coincident constraint and click this point and the origin. Now, suddenly, we know exactly where our sketch is and everything is black. And now our sketch has this padlock. This is what we want. We want a fully constrained sketch. Let's add some things to it. I'm gonna add a line and I'll add another line. How would I make these lines go through the center of this square and turn black and make the sketch fully constrained? Well, I could use the midpoint tool. So I'll click this point and this point. And now these two lines always meet in the middle. I could use the coincident constraint and click here. And then I could click here. And I could use the coincident constraint on this line and this line and on this line and this line. Okay, so now we are within the box, but we're still not constrained. We still have to fully constrain the sketch. So what I want to do is add some perpendicular constraints. So let's try that. I'll do perpendicular constraint there and a perpendicular constraint here. And now we have these lines that are perfectly constrained and our padlock has returned to our sketch. Let's add a circle to our sketch. If I have this circle here, it's not constrained anymore. I can add a horizontal vertical constraint. So now it's horizontal to the top of my cube. I could add a dimension by pressing D and I can click from here to here. And I wanna show you a new thing we can do with dimensions. I can click this dimension and the very first one, and I can divide it by two. So now it's always gonna be half that distance. And you can tell that's a driven dimension because it says FX, but it's still not constrained. Okay, let's give it another dimension. If you wanna dimension a circle, click the edge and let's say 60. Now we have a fully constrained sketch because we've told how far the circle is over, how big the circle is, and where the circle is in space because it's collinear here. Another way to constrain a sketch is with an angle dimension. What if I want this funky object to come off the edge of my sketch? Well, I can start to think about how I want it to exist. So let's add a collinear constraint. I want this and this to be in line. And let's, let's add some distance. So I'll go from this point to this point. We'll say that's 115. But notice I can still move the other objects around. This is why we need to constrain our sketches. So that'll still stay 115, but look how tall it gets. So we don't want that to happen. What if we want this to be a specific angle? We can use the dimension tool, click this line, then this line. And I can say this angle is 50 degrees. So now this line is fully constrained. We'll go ahead and make this line perpendicular. And let's go ahead and make this one perpendicular as well. Now we're getting somewhere. So we can go ahead and use the parallel constraint. And we'll say this line and this line are parallel. 
So now we have these two lines parallel. Let's make this line and this line parallel. Now that is constrained, but we still have lots of stuff that's not constrained. We can make these distances grow. So let's give this a distance. We'll go back and use our dimensioning tool. We can go from this point to this point. And sometimes you have to move the tool around to get the dimension that you want. Here we go. And I want that to be 75. We can use our vertical and horizontal for these two points. We'll make this be 60. And then we can use our equal constraint to make this line and this line equal. So now, once again, we have a fully constrained sketch. We have a padlock on our sketch, and we're ready to do all kinds of crazy extrusions to make this form. Now we have our sketch that has now been extruded into objects on our sketch plane. So we always want to make fully constrained sketches before we move forward in the modeling process. Make sure that you have that padlock on your sketch.